and welcome back to Physics in Action. I am your host, Miss Nielsen. Before the break, you investigated the motion of objects that travel with a constant velocity. However, objects in the real world often change their velocity. So the question must be asked. What happens if an object changes its velocity? What happens if an object's velocity is not constant? And the answer, one simple word, acceleration. And that is what we are reporting on today, folks. As usual, you are going to want to take notes on today's report. We're going to start off in the field where we have a quick demo of what acceleration looks like. Then we're going to head over to my classroom and I'll tell you the definition and the simple equation of acceleration. How do we solve for acceleration? Then we're going to head back out to the field to see a couple more examples of acceleration and where you might see it in your daily life. Heading over to you. Hey everyone, Miss Nielsen here reporting from the field, which is Cold Spring Avenue. I'm going to take you through some examples of acceleration that you will be able to relate to the next time you step into your car. Previously, we have only dealt with objects that travel at a constant velocity, and this is what I mean. So I'm now traveling at a constant velocity of around 20 miles per hour. It is not changing, it is constant, so that is my constant velocity. So what happens if I change my velocity? Well, I'm about to answer that question. We know that the answer, the simple answer, is indeed acceleration. My current velocity is zero miles per hour. I am not going anywhere, I am very stationary. But what happens if I change that velocity? Let's go. I am now changing my velocity. It's no longer zero miles per hour. Now it is 20 miles per hour. Now it is 25 miles per hour. And now it is almost 30 miles per hour. I've changed my velocity. So we are now in unit four, which is constant acceleration. So previously in our past unit, unit three, we only dealt with things that were traveling at constant velocities. So something was moving like 25 meters per second to the east forever. Um, but as we said before, we asked that question, what happens if something changes its velocity? So what happens when an object's velocity changes? And the answer to that is acceleration. Okay, so that change in velocity is, is something called acceleration. So you saw in that example right before this that acceleration is something that happens when a velocity changes for an object. So we're going to define what acceleration is in this video and um, give some examples of acceleration. So um, what is acceleration? Well, the good thing is about this unit is that we're still really in motion, like we're still talking about motion. So acceleration is our only new term. Um, so we don't have to define anything else. Um, we're gonna use all the same words from last unit, um, but acceleration is a change in velocity over a period of time. So if an object's velocity changes over a certain period of time, that is acceleration. So that's our definition, um, and really acceleration can be used as a verb. Sometimes we say that like the object accelerates, the car is accelerating, or the person like has an acceleration. So we use all of those different words, accelerates, accelerating, and acceleration, um, any kind of verb or noun, but it all describes the same thing in that the object's velocity is changing over a period of time. Um, so that change in velocity can happen in a couple different ways, and we'll talk about those ways here in a second. Um, but any of those statements, accelerates, accelerating, or acceleration, all tell us that the object's velocity is changing. So now to talk about the um, equation for acceleration, um, we write acceleration as an A, which is really nice, A for acceleration. Um, so the definition of acceleration gives us the equation. So the acceleration or the average acceleration of an object is equal to the change in velocity. Remember delta V, delta means change. The change in velocity over the time or divided by the time. So that's our equation. It's pretty simple. Remembering that A stands for acceleration. Delta V tells us the change in velocity, which comes directly from that definition. So change in velocity is delta V. 
and delta v can be quickly calculated, right? Taking the change, we take the final velocity, or vf, minus our initial velocity, vi, that's equal to our delta v. And then finally, our t still stands for time. So acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by a period of time. Um, so with this um, delta V action here that we've got, the VF minus the VI, we can actually write our um, acceleration equation a little bit more succinctly. So I can say that the average acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time as well. This is another equation. Both of these equations say the same thing, and that's the definition of acceleration. Okay, so both of, you can use either one that you want because delta V is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So it's really nice that our definition for acceleration and our equation kind of match up, but also it's really important for us to discuss the units. So um, just like I would if I were finding the units for a problem solving problem, I'm going to take my equation and start there. So when um, I have an equation, I'm just going to plug in the units I know. So I'm gonna, I know the units for velocity and I know the units for time. Um, so our usual units for velocity in physics are meters per second. Um, we could have others, but it's usually meters per second. And then our usual standard uh, unit for time is uh, seconds. So what we have here for the unit of acceleration, we have meters divided by seconds divided by seconds. Um, which is kind of weird. So um, our unit that we kind of write for acceleration, our typical standard unit for acceleration is meters divided by seconds squared. So meters per second squared. And it's really important to remember that that second is just, or the squared is just on the seconds. So I can rewrite this and say meters per second um, squared and only the squared, the squared only applies to the seconds. Because again, we're taking meters divided by seconds divided by seconds, that's meters divided by seconds squared, or meters per second squared. So this is kind of the standard uh, cookie cutter uh, unit for acceleration for us in physics, but we could have other units, like we have other units for velocity. So again, if I start with my equation for acceleration, the change in velocity divided by the time, um, I can come up with some different units. So uh, another unit for velocity that we've encountered is kilometers per hour. So it could be kilometers per hour and then our time could also be measured in hours in which our acceleration would be kilometers per hour squared. Again, we have that time unit is being squared. Um, or we also see miles per hour for our velocity unit, so it could be miles per hour, and then our time could be measured in seconds. This is kind of a weird one, but it would end up to be miles per hour per second, or miles per hour divided by seconds. Either way, it's awkward to say. Um, so you could write it miles per hour per seconds as well. Um, Usually though, we stick with our meters per second squared because that's a really nice unit for us um, rather than dealing with like miles per hour per second or miles per second per hour or anything like that. But the most important thing to remember is just that it's a, um, a distance unit divided by a time unit squared, okay? So meters per second squared. But we have all those options for our units. So now we ask the question, okay, we know the units, we know the definition, and we know the um, equation. So taking a look at our definition, a change in velocity over a period of time. Well, velocity is a vector, and since velocity is a vector, acceleration must also be a vector. Okay, and I'm going to prove it to you with a couple simple examples. So since we calculate acceleration with velocity, and velocity is a vector, then acceleration has to be in a, a vector as well, which means it must be it must have a direction, just like velocity does. So here's an example. A car accelerates from 0 meters per second to 10 meters per second in 4 seconds. And I could plug this into the equation and find the acceleration. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take a look at the picture. So that car starts out with 0 meters per second. It is not moving, just like we saw in the first video example. So its initial velocity, one could say, is 0. Then it accelerates and it has a final velocity of 10 meters per second. So then the car is moving. The car isn't moving to start, but the car is then moving at the end. So what we have here is we have the velocity increasing. The velocity is getting bigger. 
So if the velocity is increasing, a colloquial way to say this is that we are, quote, speeding up. Okay, you see a green light, you're in your car, you see a green light and you speed up. You increase your velocity. Okay, a nicer way for us to say this in physics is that we have a positive acceleration. If we are speeding up, we're increasing the velocity, which means we have a positive acceleration acceleration. An increase is positive, so we have a positive acceleration. Again, the car wasn't moving, then it is moving. Increase in velocity means a positive acceleration. Conversely, we can have kind of the same situation, but opposite. A car accelerates from 10 meters per second to zero meters per second in four seconds. Well, again, I can take a look at the same picture, just flipped. The car is moving, its initial velocity is 10 meters per second it's moving but then it comes to a stop it's not moving so it's um it's moving and then not moving so its final velocity would be zero meters per second so it's going from 10 to zero so that velocity is decreasing the velocity is going down so colloquially we might say that the car is slowing down okay you're in your car you see a red light you slow down to a stop but again, a nice way for us to say this in physics is that the car has a negative acceleration. The car had a velocity of 10, it went down to zero, that velocity decreased. Decreasing means negative, so we have a negative acceleration. We'll talk a lot more about directions as it comes in the next few days, but um, those are kind of like the typical two examples. So um, let's take a look at some other examples um, in the field. Let's go back to the field for an example of slowing down and of another type of acceleration. Another example of acceleration is slowing down. So I'm traveling around 20 miles per hour and I'm gonna come to a stop. I'm gonna stop my vehicle, I'm slowing down, I'm decreasing the velocity, I am accelerating in the negative direction because I'm slowing down till finally I come to a stop. So now we know the definition of acceleration is a change in velocity over a period of time. But remember, velocity is a vector, which means it has a magnitude and a direction. So there's a couple different ways that we can change our velocity. Often when we think of acceleration, we think of speeding up or slowing down, and that's changing the magnitude of the velocity. You're going a faster or a slower velocity than you previously were. But we can also accelerate or have an acceleration just by changing the direction of our velocity. So let's take a look at an example of this type of acceleration. So here I am in the Monona Grove parking lot. I am going to travel through the circle in front of the high school. And as I do this, I'm going to maintain a constant speed of around 10 miles per hour. However, as I previously stated, my direction will be changing. And since my direction of my velocity is changing, I will be accelerating. I will have an acceleration. So I'm going to travel at about 10 miles per hour as I go around this circle. So here I go. I am turning now. Even if I'm traveling at a constant speed, I am accelerating. I am turning, 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 turning. I'm accelerating, 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 even though I'm just changing the direction and I'm not changing my speed. So that is another example of acceleration. So previously we have seen a couple different examples of acceleration. We saw speeding up, slowing down, as well as turning. And those were all things that happened um, in, in your car, right? So you can experience those uh, things as you drive around in the next few days. Um, but any type of speeding up, slowing down, or turning is considered acceleration. But we also see acceleration in other points of our life as well. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of those examples right now. So if I place this cart on the ramp and I let it go, you probably already know what's gonna happen. It's gonna naturally want to roll down the ramp. Right now the cart, I'm holding it, so it's not moving. Its velocity is zero, right? We know it's going to accelerate because it has to change its velocity. First, it doesn't have a velocity, and then 
it's going to increase its velocity. So the entire time the cart travels down the ramp, it is increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing its velocity, so it's accelerating. It's constantly accelerating at a constant rate every time, for all of the times, it's rolling down the ramp. Okay, so here we go, its velocity is zero. When I let it go, it's going to increase its velocity and thus accelerate. And there it is. Another example I have for you of acceleration is something falling. That something being my tennis ball here. Say I have this tennis ball, I have it at a certain height above my table and I'm going to drop it. Currently it has zero velocity. Its initial velocity is zero because I'm holding it, just like we saw with the ramp. But if I drop it, it's going to fall and fall and fall and fall and fall until it hits the ground and it has a much higher velocity. So it must be accelerating because it's changing its velocity from zero to something, okay? So here it is, boom, it accelerated. That was really fast, right? It had zero velocity and then it had some velocity right as it was about to hit the table. So it must have been accelerating. Let's take a look at the slow-mo. Thanks for joining us once again today here on Physics in Action. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about acceleration, its equation, and its definition, which are exactly the same thing. Hopefully now in your daily life, you will see those relevant examples the next time you go out driving, play Mario Kart, or just happen to drop something. Until next time, I'm Ms. Nielsen. Thanks for watching Physics in Action. Miss Nielsen here and I'm about to play some Wii Mario Kart. Obviously I would like to take a video of myself driving in the real world but I think that's very unsafe so I'm going to explain constant velocity versus constant acceleration as I play Yoshi Falls. So here we go, let's try it. Obviously I'm starting in first because I'm a master at Mario Kart so here we go, we're about to accelerate in three, two, and one, accelerate. Now I'm traveling at a constant velocity, but I'm about to turn. Every time I turn, I change my direction, and therefore I change my velocity. A change in velocity is acceleration, so I'm accelerating, even though I'm turning just a little bit. Constant velocity, not changing direction, but I'm changing direction again. And I'm going to start hitting these speed bumps. Every time I hit one of these speed bumps, I'm also going to accelerate because it gives me a little boost of speed. It increases my speed, therefore I accelerate. So now I'm traveling at a constant velocity. I try to hit Daisy. There we go. All right, first place. And now I'm turning once again. Every time I turn, I accelerate because a change in velocity, change in direction, is a acceleration. Constant velocity portion here. Turning again, acceleration. Turning again. Speed boosts. Those speed boosts are increasing my speed, like I said before, and that results in an acceleration. Also, every time I kind of come off of those speed bumps, I do slow down a little bit because I'm not going as fast as I was, so that's also acceleration. Last lap, here we go. Let's see if I can maintain my streak in first. And constant velocity, not changing direction. Then I'm gonna start turning and turning, hitting those speed bumps again. An increase in speed results in an acceleration. No, I just got bombed. We will see if I can maintain my first place, maybe barely. Constant velocity right here at the end because I'm not increasing my speed or changing direction and I ended in first. So that's how much constant velocity and constant acceleration we see every single time we drive, especially in Mario Kart. So there you go.